Hi, thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today I wanted to do an end of July tour of all of our container plants. So today I wanted to start out underneath the gazebo here and show you a few of the plantings that I have going on under here. Um, we do have a new table, this table and the table behind here that my husband just made and I think that they turned out just beautiful. Um, we got the wood and he sanded it down and um, put a coat of Danish oil on it and then several coats of the polyurethane because we knew we were going to keep it outside. Um, it is protected under this gazebo but it still will get you know, when we have heavy rains, it'll still get the rains that come in. And then it also um, gets the evening sun that hits it. So we want to make sure that it doesn't fade out the wood. But on top of this, I have this little trio of three. And you'll see that there's a theme as we go along. Um, I, when I have a planter, if it's a showpiece planter, I will have it by itself. But typically I have planters in sets of three or five. Um, I find those to be a little more pleasing to the eye than to just have one here, then one there. Um, or, you know, you have little things and you have them, um, you know, just kind of scattered about. And when you group them together, it brings a little bit more drama and a little more impact. So here I have this striped petunia that's um, really pretty. I don't usually do striped petunias, but um, this one I like. And then we have a little rogue one back here that's just white. The thing with petunias is you have to deadhead them, so you have to pull all these little spit ones off. So um, I come out here several times a day, no, several times a week, and um, we'll pick those off, and it's really kind of therapeutic. Uh, it will still continue to bloom even if you don't pick them off, but it just looks a lot better if you do. And then next to that, I have a polka dotted plant, which is an annual as well. And then in front of that, I have my little blue frog, and I like to take that. Um, cobalt blue color and just tie it into a few different places here in the back. So you'll see that as we go along too. So this is a new planting and again I bring in that cobalt blue but I just dug up some of these hostas from the front um, where they were just getting way too much sun. So you can see the difference between what it looks like getting blasted by the sun and what it looks like when it's in shade. Um, Definitely, it was getting way too much sun, sun out there. And um, I tried to cut off as much of the dead as I could and put it in here. And then I'll just keep an eye on it as we go along. And as I get more new growth coming out, I will cut away the old growth. Now, I like to do perennials in my container plants quite often. This case, I just dug it up out of the yard and put it in a pot so it's absolutely free. And free is always good but it's got some unique markings on it. Um, and then sometimes in the beginning of the season, I will get perennials intentionally to put in my pot so that at the end of the season, I can put them in the ground and enjoy them next year in the garden. So as we come along here, you'll see this banana plant. And my goodness, it has just done so great. Um, as the leaves start to get older, they do start to get a little die back on them. But the fresh new leaves that come in are lined with red and they're just so beautiful. Just beautiful. And that's the brand new one getting ready to come out. And this thing is, um, I'll turn the camera around so you can see. So as you can see, it's as tall as I am. So it has grown great. It looks beautiful and I love it. And I will have a banana plant in this planter, I think every single year from now on. So I do have this banana plant underplanted with some yellow petunias. I think it looks really good together. Maybe next year I will try pink to really accentuate the lining on the outside of the, bana the banana plant. I think that looks really good. And then I have my little, my little fish next to it. <laughs> that I love, I think it's really cute. Um, up here, I have a uh, bubblegum petunia. And when I planted that, I thought that I should probably put five in there. And I think I only put two or three. And it, clearly, it's not enough. Um, it has great color, 
it's just not very dense. So I need to keep notebook and keep track of the hits or misses that I have with my pots so that I can know next year if I want to repeat the exact same thing, like that beautiful banana tree, or if I want to try something different. And every year I think that I will be able to remember from year to year, but I just don't. <laughs> So um, moving right along here, I have this beautiful succulent and I think that looks just gorgeous and my husband got that at Kroger on clearance for like four bucks and uh, it just loves it there. It's doing really good. So that's that area and <laughs> it seems like I always have, always have something growing from seed, but these are poppies and um, they've kind of gotten away from me a bit. As you can see, they should have been in the ground a long time ago. So over here we have a little trio. I've got this tropical plant that we do overwinter in the pool house every year. This year we might have to chop its head off to get it in there. It has just grown so much. And the pot that it's in is half the diameter of the plant. I mean, it has really just done well. The first year we put it in the pool house, it had quite a bit of dead on it when we pulled it out the next year. But this year when we pulled it out, there was minimal dead on it. So it really, really did well. Then we have that little um, type of palm there that I got on sale clearance again at Kroger. I think it was, I don't know, two or three bucks. And then underneath that, I have this beautiful pot that another one of my daughters got me for my birthday and it's flat on one side so you could hang it i'll try to come in and show you so um you could hang it you could lay it flat like that and just let the stuff spill out of it um and i kind of go back and forth between what i do i feel like i don't have the right plant in there for it to be spilling over because it just kind of wants to drip down Maybe if I had a seed in the mirror or something, it would take that a lot better. But down here in our little frog, we have a cactus. And that cactus has been in there for, I think, three years. <laughs> I think it's just hilarious. But we put them upstairs in the bathroom every single year. And if you zoom in close, it's got a lot of little buds on it where it's getting ready to flower. So he seems to be pretty happy in there, pretty content. Over here I have uh, geraniums in this pot. And then underneath that, I have some more of that polka dot plant. So cute. This container is um, concrete and I absolutely love the container, but it seems like Every year, everything I grow in there struggles struggles quite a bit. Last year, I did grow some lavender in there, and that did really well. I think what happens with the, the spot that it's in, the roots must get really hot. So nothing really flourishes in there. I think I'm going to just try the lavender again, or maybe even some more um, like hens and chicks or something like that that doesn't mind getting real dried out. I know um, some super tunias also may do well in there because they don't mind the roots getting dried out, although I don't know if they would care too much for the heat. So over here on our little fire pit, which I don't have any of my cushions out here, and I have everything covered up and I have my hose out, but that's just reality, right? Um, and here I have a beautiful little succulent. And um, every year when I look for something to put into this little shell, I always make sure that it's something that I can plant in the yard at the end of the year. So, and then down inside there, I have a little chick that I got from a wedding, um, actually two years ago, I think. No. Over here, next to the garden, this is one of those things that didn't go quite so well. So, you might remember where I did, I'd done a couple of these, but uh, the huge chick that I had in the middle here, it died because this pot, uh, it does have a hole in it, but I need to put feet on it because the water is just staying in there. So I had this on the front porch. I brought it back here to where it could get more sun and dry out a little bit more. 
I'm gonna get another chick to put in there and some feet to put underneath it and it will do just fine. Over here I have Tony's yearly requirement of, oh gosh, uh, what are they called? Marigolds. He loves the marigolds. And um, I like to put them next to the garden because they do help control pests. And then we have little gnomes that are tucked in here and there all over the place. We got the little fisher guy right there um, back in here. Gosh, I don't even know if you can see him anymore. But there's a couple tucked in the garden here and there. <laughs> so this is definitely not a planter. It's just I, I dug up some of the Siberian iris and I just threw them in there until I can figure out where I want to put them. They're beautiful, but they only have color for a couple weeks throughout the whole year. So I don't want to have it in a prominent spot, but I still want to be able to see them. So I have a feeling they're going to end up going back at the end of the property. So over here, I would say we have a few hits and a few misses. Um, this lime tree we got last year and um, we overwintered it. You can see it has a little lime on it, but it has had a few limes on it. Now we did get some limes last year, but man, it is just looking so sad. So we're, I'm sure we're not gonna try to save that again this winter. Um, we may buy another one down the road and just use it for that season and then move on. But right behind that, we have this glorious planter that I absolutely adore. The petunias are just thriving in here. Um, I had dianthus in here that, uh, I have a little straggler there. No, that's not the di dianthus. Yes, it is. So that's the dianthus that's just kind of straggling along. So I need to cut those all back and I'll get another flush from them. I have some patients here that um, just have a couple little blooms left, but they'll flush again, I'm sure. And then this white, I've never done this white in here before, but I absolutely love it. I love how it just looks like a white cloud. It's just beautiful. So I don't remember the name of it, but I do remember that I kept the tag in there. And you can see on this side, it's even more, more special. Just love it. Now this is one of those plants that I will plant all the way around because you can see it from all different directions. Uh, the sun patients on this side are doing particularly well. I have a palm in there and then we have this guy that is another one of those things that we overwintered in the pool house. Um, probably won't do it again because it's just now coming into its own and here it is late July. So uh, this is another one of those things that we overwintered and I underplanted that with petunia but um, up here you can see the new growth is just absolutely beautiful but I've been struggling because on the bottom we have this is the you know like I said this is what we kept in the pool house over the winter and the things on the bottom are just struggling so we won't do that again either I'll just buy fresh every year. I try to figure out ways to save money because it can get really expensive, you know, with all the new plants. So sometimes you just need to know where to pick your battles, right? So we'll go back up here on the deck. Oh, this, I love this little grouping here. And this is in the directs, half in the sun and half not in the sun. So I hope that you can see it. But this is a little succulent pot that's in rock. My husband got that for me. Again, at Kroger on clearance. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very expensive. And then we have this cute little turtle that a friend of ours, Kevin and Susan, got us from Arizona. So we just put this little cactus in there. He's so cute. Um, this is a ginkgo, not ginkgo, ginger, Gosh, I can't even think of the name of it. I'll, if I think of it, I'll put it on the screen for you. But um, my husband picked that out. It's unique. 
it's definitely unique, different. Um, but again, I put it in the blue pot just to help kind of tie everything in together. See, but then we also added our little fish in. As you can see, as we go, I have a few fish tucked here and there. We are uh, definitely beachy, watery kind of people. And I know we live in Ohio, but we still bring in that little bit of beach when we can. So down here we have another grouping. This is one, two, three, four, five, if you count the fish. Um, and, and the tall pot is the dahlia, and it had an underplanting of uh, ranunculus under them. I am going to do a video where I take out the ranunculus and keep the corms for next year so I can have beautiful flowers again next year. This guy um, is just not doing so well, and I asked uh, someone that I watch on YouTube, um, she's the impatient gardener, what I should do with this dahlia because it just kind of looks like it's just kind of wah, wah, wah. And um, she had a couple good suggestions for fertilizing it if, we're, if I'm going to keep it in the pot. She does most of her dahlias in the ground, which is, I think, what I will do from now on with that. Um, next to it, we have a geranium. So this polka dot plant, um, I just absolutely love it. It's really doing well. This one is doing better than any of the others, and I think that it just likes the situation that it's in right now. It gets a good amount of sun, but then in the heat of the day, it is shaded. So there's the dianthus in there that you may remember from an earlier video where I really cut back hard. And I thought, well, if it doesn't come back, then I'll just take it out. But it did come back and it flushed um, a whole set of pink flowers and it was just beautiful. So I cut them back again and I'm sure I'll get another flush of flowers. Um, and then down here, I think it's a super tunia. Not 100% sure, but this was one of my little Clarence guys. So I'm trying to save him. And he's coming back. He's got a little flower on it. Which is so cute. So I think he's going to be just fine. And that is one of my succulents that I did a video on earlier in the year. I just love it. I think it's so cute. And as we walk down the deck, you'll see um, this other planter. Um, another beach theme kind of pot that we have going on here. Um, we have um, Lantana, which is what this is. It's not really in bloom right now. It's getting ready to flush again, but um, it does have some seed pods on it that I think are so cute, but I do need to cut the seed pods on so I'll get another flush of blooms. I have some nasturtium in here that I planted by seed. Haven't decided if I'm a fan or not. It just doesn't look like it's doing so great. I probably won't do it again next year, although um, it's got some really sweet flowers that have a really beautiful smell to them. But I just don't know that I'm a fan. And then I have an annual Dusty Miller in there as well, a couple of those. And then this is a Gerber Daisy that's in here that is yellow that doesn't have a flower on it right now. So this planter, when it's in full bloom, there is a lot of orange reds and then the whites and it looks so pretty when it's in full bloom so i walk around here we're in the full sun right now um, this is a geranium that is just doing great it has new blooms on it every single day and my other daughter jessica got me this for mother's day absolutely love it and then as you go back there i'm not going to go well i'll go over and show you <laughs> these these are a couple of the things that we save over the winter we take upstairs and put in the bathroom these two cactus and they're just kind of there although I have to say it does have buds on there where it's getting ready to bloom and then this is another this is one of the succulents that um, oh gosh that's just laying in there I need to figure out what I'm going to do with because this pot does not have a drainage hole and succulents do not like to have their feet wet so that's going to have to go somewhere else we have our palm here that we just love and we have a couple of seashells that's sitting out here all by itself it does get quite neglected it doesn't get watered as often as a lot of the other things do but doesn't seem to be minding it quite at all. So there's another container plant that I have planted in the cobalt blue. I just love the look of it. It helps to tie everything together. 
it does have that orange flower on the top and the orange flower is growing on the striped canna and there's a, another canna in there that's not striped but that has yellow flowers that bloom on that and it's so pretty i do have the yellow begonia underneath it um, that is doing really well the petunias in this pot are not doing great by any stretch of the imagination i did just cut some of them back I don't know if I need to spray them with BT or if they just need fed better or they may be getting too much water. I'm not really sure, but I know next year I'm not going to plant the cannas in the same spot, the same pot as the petunias, but I will repeat the begonias in there because they look beautiful. So as we come around to the front of the house, um, I have the coleus here in this one pot. This is probably one of my favorite plants this year. Um, my favorite plants are the hydrangeas and it's definitely this Wicked Witch Coleus. It just looks absolutely stunning in that pot. And I am 100% sure that I will plant that in that pot in that space every single year because I just absolutely love it. And then over here, uh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it is not doing well. This is a pot that I have put hostas in and they were doing them really well at the beginning of the season. Now I just think they're just really overcrowded in there. It doesn't look horrible, but it just doesn't look as good as I wanted it to look. This is a pot that I put that um, hookah in and it is another one of those just beautiful ones. It looks like it's just been splattered with pink paint. So that will go back in the new poolside garden. There's coleus in there. Um, this I think is a vinca vine is what it's called. And they have that in a lot of planters when you get them and um, they make a really good fill. I don't know why I only have one in here. I think because I didn't plant it in here this year and it just grew back from last year. But you can save those and put them in the ground and then next year, take pieces off of them because they spread a lot. You'll want to dig them up and then you can put them in your plants and just have that nice fill in there. But we have the coleus here and then there's also um, this midnight calla lily that is just getting um, no love back there. So I, I'm going to say that this planter is maybe a fail for this year. Um, there's a few things I like about it, a few things that I don't that um, would definitely be doing better in different spots. And um, I already showed you the ivy over there. Now over here, this is the last couple planters that I have and we have the um, sedum again here my husband got that at Kroger on clearance he got all three of those on clearance the same day for less than ten dollars and um, they'll come back every year so I'll have those and then I have this um, fern and this fern was I think the first thing that I bought this year and I put it out here and um, then we got a lot of really major frost after that and I left it out here because it was protected and it had a little bit of die back but it pretty much did okay so that's it i'm going to end this video right here next to my favorite planter thank you so much for gardening with me god bless and have a great week mm -hmm.